here we are, Brattleboro's Community Talk Show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and on our show today we have Jackson Heller. Jackson is a freshman at BUHS, the Brattleboro High School, and he has lived here all his life. He's done a lot of traveling as well, so we're going to be talking to him today. Hi, Jackson. Hi. 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 Good to see you. <laughs> Thank Jackson. you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Um, after school, one more thing to do. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, um, you're born in Brattleboro. You grew up mm. really close to Oak Grove School as well, right? That's yeah. part of your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I lived, I easily, I could walk there. I'd always meet friends there. Yep. Always play different games there because they have a big, nice area for playing yeah, stuff. Yeah, they do. Where they, we, you know, we'd have recess there. Yep, it's a great spot. So, you knew a lot of kids growing up through, mm -hmm. throughout your whole, your whole life at school, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, either kids in my grade or kids older than me who mm -hmm. I knew through, uh -huh. who were neighbors or just kids I met here and there through parents yeah. or something like that. Do you have an early memory from being a little kid? I don't have a very, from anything far enough back. Yeah. I mean, I remember in third grade, which I think is probably the main thing, we did, our teacher, er, our teacher was very, was into mushrooms, so we did a lot of stuff with mushrooms, which was very interesting. That you is know, interesting. We went on hunts and stuff. And oh, that so always, you foraged. Yeah, we always went into different forests and areas, uh -huh. which and explored places I'd never seen before, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. saw different types of mushrooms, which is interesting. You yeah, know. that's good. Can you still identify them? I wouldn't say I could. I would see one and be like, hey, I remember learning about that. Yeah. And some I could be like, oh, that's, you know, I remember hearing about that, and I could maybe say the name of it, but usually I wouldn't say that I'm... Yeah, and you wouldn't want to pick it and eat it if you didn't know no, what you were dealing with, no. right? <laughs> but I, yeah, no, I <laughs> would not do that. Were, were there any family stories of you as a little kid? So when I was first born, we, as I was saying, we lived really close to the hospital. Uh -huh. And my mom was telling me about this when we were, there's an intersection in between going from the hospital and going on to the road in which I live. Yeah. So, and it's just a little intersection, which was like a little quick thing usually. But when you're going home for the first time with your newborn baby, it's a lot more stressful. Mm -hmm. And my mom was telling me about how stressed she was trying to cross that intersection where it's, it's a four-way intersection, yeah. really. So there's, you know, cross, yep. lots of different ways. But yep. she was telling me how nervous she was crossing it. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true when you've got a little, a little baby. It's a whole different thing. Um, so you grew up an only child. Mm -hmm. You're still an only child. Yep. Yes, I, I, I also am an only child, mm -hmm. so I know a little bit about what it's like. Do you feel um, the difference when you're with friends? I mean, I have, I have a good amount of friends who I hang out with somewhat regularly who are, who are not only child, but I also have many friends who are only childs. Mm -hmm. My main, one of my best friends has an older sister, and whenever I'd hang out with his house, they'd always be, when I was younger, when we were all younger, they would always be fighting about something here and there or something, yeah. calling to their mom or something, yeah. which is very different because, you know, I was at home all by, with no brother or sister, yeah. but, and with my parents, so I would never be, like, squabbling with my, yeah. any sibling. Yeah. Do you feel like, um, you know, growing up, you spent a lot of time with your parents, and so your relationship with your parents is probably mm -hmm. a pretty tight relationship. Yeah, I definitely have a very good relationship yeah. with my parents. We, I don't know, traveling and stuff, always right. with them, lots of, yeah. You were at Oak Grove School, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you went um, K through six there? Yes, and then through six And grade. then you went on to the middle school. Mm -hmm. Was that a big transition to go to the middle school? Um, going was, de it was definitely, a uh, big difference because in elementary school we were all in the same classroom. We'd left, we'd leave once in a while for maybe like an art class mm -hmm. or something like that. But it wasn't like we'd have, we'd have reading, like our literacy thing and mm -hmm. our math all in the same room right. with the same teacher. Right. But when I moved to middle school I had to figure out where these classrooms were, which mm -hmm. order I went to them in, mm -hmm. and I had to meet these new teachers and new people yep. in the classes. Yeah, it's a big change. Yes. It's a real big change. Probably not so big from going to middle school to high school. No, it, yeah. was, it was definitely yeah. a way bigger deal going from elementary school to middle school. Yes. So um, in the course of all this time, though, you also were traveling with your parents. Yes. To some pretty cool places. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And yeah. I, th I mean, my first big travel to Italy and I think I don't remember exactly how old I was but 
um, I was definitely very young, and I do struggle rem remembering it. But I remember, I remember going to the Coliseum. I remember being very hot. We went on this tour, which I probably found pretty boring, mm -hmm. but it was a Coliseum, so I couldn't really complain. And I made smaller trips before that to California, where I have family out there, mm -hmm. so we'd go there. In in between my sixth grade and middle school year, I went to Spain, which was another my second out of second out of the country except uh -huh. maybe going to Canada or something. Yeah, did you know the language at all? I take I had taken 6 years of it oh, you in did. whether or not I was good at it after those 6 years, I no, I wasn't the best at it and yeah. I'm still getting better. Uh-huh. You're still taking Spanish. I am still taking uh -huh. Spanish cuz yeah. that's what I know and yeah, that's what yeah. I like to learn. Yeah. Um, any fun stories from being on those trips? When I was in Spain, we had this group tour which turned out not to be a group tour. It consisted of me, my dad, my mom, and then the tour guide, which <laughs> we were in their little Mercedes car driving around. So you had and a guided tour. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty great. Yeah, was, we have to go through this giant mountain range, which is like, it's like those mountains you see in like action movies, right. you know, when they're turning the yeah. corners and like yeah. skidding off the road and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it was very, it was an interesting ride there. Yeah. And it was a beautiful place there. Yeah. The, River, I've probably the ocean and how'd yeah. you do with food yeah, traveling? That was, was a struggle, but yeah. in Italy it was easier because you know pasta, pasta and pizza. That was basically my diet when I was in Italy, yeah. and then in Spain, just kind of meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. meat. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. So both of your parents are teachers. Yep. And they both teach at the high school. Yeah. Yeah. How's that for you? Um, uh, they both work. It's nice. I see them in the hallways. I'll say hi. And oh, it's that's easier. Good. If, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I ever need something or forget something, I can always be like, hey, mom or hey, dad, uh -huh. can you please get this thing for me? Yeah. Does it make a difference, do you think, in your experience of high school? I mean, I, I hear from a lot. I'm always like, oh, hey, Jackson, I just saw your mom or I just had class with your mom from, mm -hmm. from friends I have who are in upper grades. Yeah. But, or in my grade too, who yeah. are like, oh, I really like your dad. Or sometimes, hey, I don't really like your, <laughs> I don't know, mom or dad. You get which, that too? I I don't get that as often. I don't think yeah. I've really gotten that, but it's something that I am expecting at some point to happen. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So you all have the summers off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. so we always have we always have the same vacation time. Did you do any interesting after school programs? Yeah, I had this. So since my parents work at the high school, when I was in elementary school, I it, my school got out at two forty five. Well, they had to work till four. Oh. So I had to find a place to be. Yeah. which turned out to be this after-school program called Aspire, where I'd spend... Called Aspire? Aspire, uh -huh. which I spent most of my time after school in, and on days that they had in-service days, I'd spend there, mm -hmm. which in sixth grade led to an interesting story. We were in the gym, and so everyone, we, everyone was on the gym wall. They were talking, and slowly people who were quiet got to go up and play. Mm -hmm. So it... So it was me and I think maybe three other kids were up playing while a bunch of maybe ten other, at least ten other people were sitting on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I was kicking a ball against the wall when I kicked the ball and it hit a clock on the wall, which led to the clock falling and shattering all over the floor, which the clock I've heard is still not there to this day. Oh my gosh. You learned how to stop time. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Good work, Jackson. That's great. Um, I want to ask you a quick question, mm -hmm. um, just going back a little bit. Um, you you were one of those kids who was sort of brought up on Legos. Yes, definitely, and definitely. So you went through probably, what, starting at the age of four or five, something <sighs> like that? Probably yeah. four or five, So yes. my question is, um, I understand the attraction to mm -hmm. them, you know, and I've seen a lot of kids just really get into um, the construction of them, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like learning some kind of engineering. You mm -hmm. know, I think it's yeah. okay, and learning yeah. how to follow directions and visual directions. Can you talk at all about how you think it's affected you? I mean, I think it's definitely, I mean, maybe my focus isn't the best, but, you know, when I set my mind to something, I can get it done usually. Mm -hmm. Like with the Legos, I usually found myself working on them for s hours and hours. I think once, maybe up to six hours, wow. maybe. And... You know, reading the instructions, putting it together, watching it build up, yeah. which is something that I really liked. Yeah. And then I, not to brag, I think I have a pretty good, or I had a pretty good imagination. And 
and I'd always find a way to play with them with my friend or something because we were both in the Legos. So now. the ones that you you were making these Legos, it wasn't like the kits that they have now. It was free form. It was. I mean, I had. It was a combination of different mm -hmm. things. I'd use things that I built, like like a Star Wars set or something mm -hmm. like that, or just random pieces that I had lying around to build, like a house or a character, like a person or something like that. Yeah, that's cool. I, I, you know, I, I, I wonder because, you know, Legos have been around for a long time, mm -hmm. but they're getting to, they're getting bigger and bigger. And yeah, bigger. Mm -hmm. and more expensive. expensive. And, and luckily, more girls are doing them mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so in school, what are, you, what are the things that you're really interested in? In school, interested in, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I like, I enjoy doing math. I enjoy doing, of course, I like doing gym. And I don't know, I, I wouldn't say that there's anything that I dislike if I don't, if I'm not looking forward to it, it's nothing new or nothing that I would say is a surprise mm -hmm. that I'm not looking forward to some class of mm -hmm. some sort. But I don't know. I find that most classes, I'm like, oh, I have this class now. Mm -hmm. And are you? Um, do you do any classes at the Career Center? I don't. I mm -hmm. don't yet. But, but that's an option for you, right? If you um, I believe so. Now I know that you're interested in film, and mm -hmm. I know that you're interested in um, in editing as well, mm -hmm. and um, I n I've just heard about this, so I don't know anything about it, but if you can explain vlogging, and that's for our audience, that's vlogging with a V, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. So can you, can you tell us what that's about? Yes, definitely. So okay. I've been into filmmaking for a while now, and it began when I, I was into skateboarding for a while, which <laughs> my friend is really into, so we watched different skateboarding videos which led to videos, which led to me wanting to make videos about skateboarding and videos about my day and what was going on. Mm -hmm. So it started, I'd call them a day in the life, mm -hmm. which, which I made maybe about 10 of. And then that was, that was um, nice, which consisted of you know, me waking up, eating breakfast, which in almost always involved me going to the Boys and Girls Club and hanging oh. out with my friend or oh, something cool. like that. That's great. And then... As I got older, it evolved into vlogging from inspirations from people like Casey Neistat, who's a big guy, who's a big like YouTube person mm -hmm. who does vlogging, which is nice. And a vlog of what normally would just be, I would film my day, usually waking up from waking up to you normally going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So how did you do it? How do you hold the camera? Well, so when I first started, I used an iPhone. So I would hold the iPhone, point at myself, and talk to it. Uh -huh. Or I'd point at different things, point at what I was filming and mm -hmm. stuff. And now I have a bigger camera with a tripod and oh, a wow. microphone. So I use the tripod to hold the camera out so I can get a wider view, uh -huh. which then I film myself talking, or I set it up to film yeah. myself talking. And then I use it to film different things. Uh -huh. And what's that like for you? What's it like vlogging? Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting. It, I would say it's a good amount of work for any day when I decide I want to vlog. But mm -hmm. you, it's hard to find an interesting day when I can pick up the camera, yeah. which and usually the vlogs I'm making involve me traveling, mm -hmm. so it's easier to find things mm -hmm. to film and stuff. But it it's an interesting part of a day, making sure to film myself saying what I'm doing, what I'm going to do, and then filming what I'm doing and getting some nice right. shots of that. You know, I'm curious because, for one reason, because, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of kids keep journals or diaries, mm -hmm. you know, when they're growing up and into adulthood, definitely. Um, is it like that, or is it different from um, recording like that? I, like, if, in comparing it to a journal, yeah. um, I mean, I think I don't use it that way, but I think maybe my parents are like, oh, look at this and what we were doing that day or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I use it more as just something to film and a video to make. Right. So almost like taking photographs, mm -hmm. like if you see yeah. something that looks good. Or yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. And you're still doing that? I do it when I find a chance, yeah. when I'm doing something interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the weather's nice outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I'm yeah. doing something that. So you also nice. play soccer. I do. You do fall and spring? I do f oh, you, you ba ma basically year-round uh -huh. Yeah, through different leagues. Oh, really? I, it's, well, it, between the school league and then this league called Storm, which is what I started out with and I've been doing since third grade, yeah. which I can't do anymore because I've outgrown it. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting because I'm 14 and born, I was born at the date 
right when I was able to play. So mid season in like the the season, the fall season, they had me join because I was old enough or young enough. Mm -hmm. So they had me play then, which was nice because I thought I'd never be able to play yeah. for that league again, mm -hmm. which was nice. And yeah. then I also played for through all my years in middle school yeah. and then this year in yeah. high school. Yeah, and you like it. You enjoy it. I love it, yeah. You're mm -hmm. in high school. Yes. And um, how do you like it? Can you can you talk a little bit about um, how you feel about being there, what what it's like on a daily basis for you, um, or incidents that have happened? Yeah, the high school, I, I think it's a great place if you have the right group of friends. Mm. I think if you find yourself with a group of friends who's, you know, nice, nice to you, nice to other people, you're going to have a good experience. Mm -hmm. Though there are some people or some people who aren't the nicest of people and don't do the right things when they should. And then there's people who find themselves with these people, which leads to them doing these things mm. when they're great, when they are, when they have good potential in mm -hmm. life. You know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is um, really about spending time and doing things that mm -hmm. you feel are healthy. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very social thing mm -hmm. with who you're talking with, and mm -hmm. I think it has to do with a lot how who how these people are raised and some with drug issues and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And do you see a lot of that in high school? Drug issues? Mm -hmm. um, I don't personally see it, but I hear of it. Mm -hmm. And I hear of people who do and use these substances. Right. Right. You know, I guess my question all really is about the culture of the, the high culture. school, you know, what, the, what it feels like walking down the halls, being there. When you're there, you get a good vibe. Good. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. And I, I personally get a good vibe, mm -hmm. but I'm guessing that there's probably, and I'm prob I'm almost 100% sure that there are people who maybe don't get a good vibe because mm -hmm. they aren't treated the way they should be or something like that, which right. isn't a common, I don't think it's a common thing, but I think it happens just like everywhere. The high school is kind of a microcosm, right, mm -hmm. of the world in a way. Yeah. It's certainly a microcosm of our community, mm -hmm. you know, where everybody, it's open to the public. So. Yeah. You know, all kids can go there. So you're seeing mm -hmm. you're seeing all kinds of kids there. Yeah, there has been an incident with a threat that was made towards the school, mm. which was a very serious thing at the time and led to very uh, led to a controversy on whether we should have had school or not. Right. Because there was many people who I think thought we shouldn't have had school. And you were there, sort of, first thing in the morning when you heard about it. Yes. Is that right? When and I was, yeah, in the morning, I was in my first block class when a student told me about something they had heard mm -hmm. that had to do with the threat. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, I was immediately scared and worried about what was going to happen. And I had no idea anything about if the school knew, if anyone knew, if mm -hmm. it was going to happen or not, or just anything to that matter. That must have been difficult. Yeah, it definitely was. I spent the last few minutes of class kind of scared and nervous along with some of the other kids yeah. near me who were thinking the same thing sure, yeah. and struggled getting work done. Yeah, that's a, something that is huge in our country mm -hmm. and it's something that hasn't existed, you know, yeah. before until mm -hmm. these last years. And so it is something that you kids are walking around with. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do you talk about it with your friends? Um, I think, I don't think that we try to bring up the things that have happened mm -hmm. just because I think it's a bit not sensitive subject that people don't really like to talk about much, yeah, but yeah. I think it comes up once in a while. You talk about happens. it in school um, with teachers, or do you have groups that get together um, with the kids and talk about it? Um, I, when the threat happened, the principal set, sent out an email assuring that everything is fine, so, but I don't, but other than that, there wasn't a big a big thing that happened. Mm -hmm. The email was sent out to everyone, all the parents and stuff, and was posted on their Facebook mm -hmm. for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. But other than that, for that occasion, there wasn't very, yeah. there wasn't anything besides. It is a, a bit unsettling, I would yeah. think, and that yeah. you would you would certainly feel that for for mm -hmm. a while afterwards. Yeah, and there's a bunch of. I mean, I've heard from people saying that he's coming back, the student's coming back, and. It, is the student not coming back? Mm -hmm. And you know, that just brings a bunch of like, should the student come back? Should the mm -hmm. student not come back? Mm -hmm. Which personally, I don't think the sh student should come back because no one's gonna feel safe with that student there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Changes things. Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. big thing. Um, okay, so a few things that I know you enjoy <laughs> is um, 
going to New York City? Yes. 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 Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, New York City, I began going when I first, my grandparents who live in Long Island, we go to visit them quite often, which then we go into the city. And thro slowly throughout the years, my love for New York grew. I love the whole vibe of the city and stuff. There's lots of interesting stores that I like, mm -hmm. interesting sites to see and stuff like that. Yeah. And that, I think that takes us to one of your, you know, one of the favorite yeah. things that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk about one of your little passions there. One of, my, yeah, one of my big passions is sneakers and fashion and streetwear and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And it has been since before, in between, I think it really came to me in between the summer of seventh grade and eighth grade. Oh, so it's pretty recent. Yeah, it was yeah. a fairly recent yeah. thing where I think it was a, it was a big change from the way I like doing things from from seventh grade to eighth grade because mm -hmm. in seventh grade I found myself I from going to seventh grade to eighth grade my ch my choice in clothing changed from some s like sports sweatshirt mm -hmm. some sports pants and some Under Armour shoes to like a sweatshirt like I'm wearing now some jeans and some expensive pair of shoes that I bought so it's, it's the shoe. The shoes are yeah, uh, the, the main attraction. Are, yeah, that's Can what I try to. And so you have a couple pairs. I with do. You. So let's take a look. So I'm going to start with this one. Which it consists of the white uh, sole, which is maybe not the sole, but the midsole yeah. area, which is what they call boost uh -huh. and is what they use as their most running, their running shoes and um, what they call very comfortable. And I would have to agree. Yeah. And then it has a knit upper, which is like a sock when I'm wearing it and mm -hmm. I have it laced mm -hmm. so it's kind of easy to slip on that's why I have it like this so whenever I'm in the car and I have to get out and I usually when I'm in the car you know I'm taking off my shoes mm -hmm. so I can get comfortable I can easily slide them right on and they're comfortable cool next one and then which was this is my first I bought oh, from those are great yeah, these are a Nike Jordan shoe mm -hmm. which was my first you know real Nike shoe because I was I'm a big Adidas person but these I got, they were for Easter. I got them, maybe, I think it was maybe on Easter day. I yeah. think it, maybe it was the Saturday, the day before. Uh -huh. But I got these and, you know, everyone, That's I find them, oh too. yeah. In my school, I find lots of people are into, I'm not the only one who is into this. So, you know, when I wore these, people are like, oh, I like your shoes and stuff like that. So you got dressed up for Easter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see the next pair. And then finally, which was... My most oh, the shoe that fabulous. I shoes I spent the most on and I was wearing today, which are Yeezys and also from Adidas, and they are Kanye West shoe, so they you know have the thing of being Kanye's okay. whether you like Kanye or not, yeah. and these are shoes I always get a look from someone. Let's see the front part of them. Yeah, hold them, hold them up. Yeah, always, and the yeah. back, that, that back yeah, little always, loop thing is pretty I'm, cool. Whenever I'm wearing them, someone's always like, I like your shoes, you're always staring. Or I, I, I always overhear people like, oh my God, that kid's wearing those shoes, <laughs> which is nice and kind of, yeah. I like that. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you for that little tour yeah. of, uh, of shoes. That's pretty great. <sighs> the other thing I know that you like a lot is um, uh, one of your friends here. Yes. Rubus Cube. Let's yep. talk about Rubus Cubes a little bit. So I first began solving, or I first began trying to solve the Rubik's Cube when I was in sixth grade when my sixth grade teacher was, had one and she'd always be like, oh yeah, I can do this. And then before me, my friend began learning to solve it and I started to learn too. Mm -hmm. And then I maybe throughout the school year, maybe starting from beginning to end, I was able to solve it in around a minute's time. Mm -hmm. And then... What, you know, I found was pretty cool, but, you know, you see on the internet people solving it in five seconds or four seconds, hmm. and I wanted to get there. I saw a four by four, which is four high and four crossed with cubes, mm -hmm. when I was like, oh, I want to learn how to do that. And within getting it, it took me two days to learn how to do wow. it. And so when you do that, do you, you put yourself in a room and focus on it like you, you did with the Legos? Um, I I think Legos are com different but similar. I can do a Rubik's cube while I'm walking down the street right. or something. I don't. It doesn't require as much thought process as reading something from like a Lego right. or something. Right. So it is different. So you've got some kind of muscle memory going yeah. on there. Yeah. Right. Yes. And mm, that's the goal to get the muscle memory. Yes. So you. So you're not even thinking when you're doing it. You're, um, you're looking and you're just 
just doing it? I begin with thinking about what I'm doing. Yeah. Because it's the first part of how I do it. Would you like me to describe how I do it? Go go right through it. So it begins. Um, sorry, I, f I begin solving the if you can see that the white cross. Yep. So I begin with the white cross, and then I fill in the slowly do the edges, uh -huh. which is called F2L, first two layers. Uh -huh. And then after I do that, I look. I just did that backwards, but. Um, I once I do that, I can look, and I my goal now is to solve the yellow side, which I look at, I examine, and that's when I use an algorithm, which is a series of moves that can orient it to where I want it to be. So then you have the yellow side, and then I look and do something called PLL, which is permutating the last layer. So if you look, you know, I have orange side, yellow side, and then the white side. But if you go around, yeah. those pieces are missing. And then I would do another algorithm, which I have to decide which one it is. And then I do it, and then it's solved. Wow. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful, Jackson. Mm. And, you, and you, you do that a lot during I the day. I do that a lot during the day, whether teachers want me to or not. They <laughs> usually tell me to stop, and then I stop. But until then, I'm most likely going to be doing it. This is great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank We're going to end with the Rubik's Cube. I think <laughs> go out in a, in a wave of glory. Thanks to all of you for being with us today. Um, it's good to get a, a bird's eye view into high school and what's going on and Rubik's Cubes and Legos and all of that. Um, sneakers, who knew, right? Thanks for being with us. We'll be here next week.